All right, Algebra 2 and Honors Algebra 2, welcome to your fall 2018 final exam video. Folks, we are in the first review. Um, if you're watching this on Sunday, the only review you have page. Uh, the page that uh, starts with number 18, solve each system. Folks, I did a little substitution, plugged in uh, 2x minus 13 in for y. Solve for x, plug it in for x in that top equation here. Again, pause them and try to make uh, both these reviews in under 15 minutes. Um, I think you should do elimination, double the, the bottom equation, then add. You have negative 2y, positive 2y, add the equations together. You get x is negative 1, plug it in maybe to the bottom equation. y is 4. Number 20 here, notice you have opposite signs on the y, so maybe multiply top one by 7, bottom one by 2. Just the uh, different y values there. Uh, opposite signs you add, you get x is 3, and then plug it in, maybe it's the top equation, y is negative 2. Here, guys, you can do x equals a inverse b. A lot of you guys check that. You got 2, 0, negative 2. I solved it uh, 3 by 3 by hand, putting 1 and 2, 2 and 3 together, and then doing elimination. Again, use your matrices, matrix application, a inverse b, you get that same answer. Literally, set them both equal to each other. You get x is negative 5. Plug that in for x, either equation, y is 7. Um, here, I want to do a inverse b. I mean, you know what z is. Work from the bottom, go to the top. There you go. All right, I'm gonna give you the answers for pretty much the rest of them here. Number 24, conjugates, just literally the opposite sign. The negative 11 stays negative 11, just the sign is the opposite. All right, please don't miss those. Uh, 26, the y-intercept is staring at you. It is negative three. That's, going, that's a negative x squared. It makes the igloo, so it has a max. It's all about negative b over 2a. You get four for the x value, plug that in for x, and then the y value is 29. Foil, first outer, inner, last on 27. First outer, inner, last. You have conjugates, so that's why the middle term is gone on 28. 29 to 32 factor, difference of two perfect squares. All right, what multiplies to 12 adds to 7, 4 and 3, both positive. Well, what multiplies to 20 differs by 8, negative 10, 2. You're going to use um, guess and check. So I thought originally 6 and 1, it's not. Uh, 6x squared, it is 3x and 2x. Then plus two plus five. That might take a little bit of time, but you do have to factor. You're not using the quadratic formula, folks. You're not solving. All right, write an a plus bi form. You're simply subtracting like terms. First outer inner last, that's four of it. i squared is a negative one, so 26 plus 22i. 35 would definitely be on your final. So if x equals negative four and x equals one half, you have x plus four times x minus one half. You're not allowed fractions or decimals, so then double this one to get rid of the two, and then just FOIL. All right, and the last page here that we're going to go to review two, which I get on Monday. Factor it and set it equal to zero, cover up method there. Factor it, then set it equal to zero. Move the 98 over, divide by two, take the square root of 49, plus or minus seven. Um, quadratic formula there. Square root of 37 is positive, plus or minus root 37, I'm added. And just, you know, simplify, put them together um, in terms of the uh, like terms, I mean. All right, so there's 41. What is the highest exponent for x is top or bottom? Highest exponent for y is top or bottom? Same thing with z, top or bottom. Okay, when you multiply, you're going to add the exponents there. Multiply with the same base, add the exponents. All right, that's all the answers to review number one. Here's review number two again for your final, which is either Wednesday or Thursday. You're getting this in class. So here are quickly the answers. You should practice this first and then quickly watch this for the answers. This is what your final is gonna really look like. Algebra two, you're gonna have 50 questions on your final. Honors algebra two, you're gonna have 56. I expect on three and four some nasty decimals, all right? You can just use this to check. You really need to practice. A negative times a negative is a positive. That's gonna be a positive four there. All right, here's number five. Add six to both sides. Two uh, x minus three is six and equals negative six. Distribute. So the six x's don't cancel. They combine to give you 12 x. There you go. And pause this whenever you need to. If I make a boo-boo, let me know on Tuesday. Distribute, add 10 to both sides. Divide by two. Um, subtract three. Greater than or equal to 12, less than or equal to negative 12. Um, there you go. 
Given the relation, state the domain and range. The domains are the x values. Please put them in order, at least to greatest. If you see duplicates, just write it once. Range is all the y values. Please put them in order, at least to greatest. It just means plug negative 3 in for x. Tell me what you get. Plug negative 1 in for x. Tell me what you get. Plug 0 in for x. That should be pretty easy. Plug 4 in for x. Tell me what you get. Cover up method. x and y intercept. Negative 6y equals negative 24. 8x equals negative 24. Find the slope of the line that passes through each pair of points. You get zero. If you get zero up top, it's zero. If you get zero on the denominator, it's undefined. Difference of the y's over difference of the x's. Notice the difference, folks. Subtract. So figure out the slope. Y equals mx plus b form. Slope is three. Um, you don't have the y-intercept here, so pick a point. Looks like I used eight, negative one. You get a y-intercept of 11. Guys, if it's parallel, you have a parallel line, you know what the slope is. It's negative one half. So negative 4 for y, negative 2 for x. The y-intercept is negative 5. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes, so your slope's going to be negative 2. Plug a in for x, negative 2 in for y. Get a y-intercept of 14. All right. Number 16. I label those equations 1, 2, and 3. We use equation 1. x is allowed to be negative 6 in equation 1 for the first one, so plug negative 6 into that first equation. This next one, x is allowed to be 6 in equation 3, so we're going to plug 6 in for x in equation 3. And then, I'm sorry, I'm going out of order. No, that's b. So the 1 means I'm using equation 1. I'm using equation 1. I'm plugging it into 3. I'm plugging it into 2. I'm plugging it into 2, and I'm plugging it into 3. If you got any more questions, we can talk about these on Tuesday. Now, I told you, you're probably going to have two of these on your final. Look at this. Plot at negative 4, go up 2 over 3, two lines. Oh, and I forgot to shade. Look at that. Less than means you're going to shade below. And I forgot to shade too. Greater than. Notice how y is positive, so greater than means you're going to shade above. Solid line, solid line because of equality. All right, moving on. Set them both equal to each other. X is 2. Um, you got y is 5. Set, or I would I would double the bottom equation, then you can um, eliminate the y's by addition. You get 6, plug 6 into either equation, you get y is negative 1. Here I used um, elimination. I tripled the top one, multiply the bottom one by 4, because y's have opposite values. You get x's, again, you add them together, opposite signs mean you add, x is 4, and then you're going to get y is negative 1. That's a nice answer. Here, um, again, A inverse B. No, not here, because you know what Z is. So you're going to work from the bottom on up. Please don't do A inverse B. You know what Z is. Plug it in the second equation. You figure out Y. Plug everything into the first equation. You can get zero. Zero is a good answer. Um, 22 here. You know what Y is, so plug that in for Y, bottom equation. And there you go. And on 23, that's where you can do A inverse B. Again, I solved it by hand. I put 1 and 2 together. I put 2 and 3 together. No matter what you do, you get 3, 1, and 2. All right, you can use your calculator for the matrix, or for those, for, for solving three by threes or two by twos, it's up to you. Here, um, you can use a calc, three A, that's three A, that's two B, add them up. That's B, and then I doubled C, subtract. A times B, and you can use your calculator for that. Just row by column, if you do it by hand. Um, and then, of course, you add, you know, you do 8 times negative 1 plus negative 3 times negative 3. That's what I mean by row by column. All right, that's B times C. Determinant of A, difference of the cross products. You can use a calculator for that, but that one's pretty easy. Difference of the cross products, determinant of B. All right, moving on. The conjugates, please don't miss conjugates. Just different sign. It was plus, now it's negative. It was minus, now it's plus. The y-intercept is 11. It's staring at you. Negative... X squared means it makes the igloo, which is a max. Do negative B over 2A. You get 1, plug 1 in for X. You get 14. Vertex is 114. Find each product, first outer, inner, last. First outer, inner, last. And you have conjugates, so the middle term X is gone. On that one, you can pause it whenever you need to. Yeah. And finish up this video relatively quickly. Difference of two perfect squares, plus 8, minus 8. Okay, factor out the 2x, and then you're just left with x minus 16. That's it. So all you can do, there's no constant, there's no what multiplies to this, adds to this. It looks like it's going to be different than two perfect squares, but x is not squared. 
Okay, x minus 5, x plus 4 on 38. 39, x minus 8, x minus 9. Here, guess and check. Only one way to get 5, 5 and 1x. So everything's got to be positive, plus, plus. So put the 2 there, the 4 there. And then, you know, this right here is the 20x. And that right there is the 2x. That's 22x. Simplify and write answers in A plus BI form. There's 41. First side are going to last. Remember, I squared is a negative 1. There's 42. Given those roots, write the quadratic with the following roots, that is. So x minus 7 times x plus 5, and then foil it. All right. Solve each equation. So factor, and then set it equal to 0. Do a product property, cover up method, whatever we're going to say. Move the 25 over, take the square root of a negative, you get plus or minus 5i. Make sure you have the i there. Um, move the 147 over. Again, if there's only x squared and a constant, move the constant over. You can take the square root. You can divide both sides by 3. You get x is plus or minus 7. Quadratic formula, the square root of 65 is the decimal, so you can end right there. Okay, I know I wrote over there a little bit. Guys, I would divide everything by 3 here. Yeah, you could use a quadratic formula, but you would have to spend some time simplifying it because this factors nicely. You get two nice answers of negative 2, negative 1. All right, simplify. Just combine like terms. On this one, x squared times x squared is just x to the fourth. 2x squared times a negative 6x is just negative 12x to the third and so forth. All right? So, I mean... We haven't talked about really that one a bunch, but that, that's pretty fair. That shouldn't be that bad. All right, honors algebra two. This is the rest for you. Algebra two, you're done. Simplify, 16 divided by four puts the four at the bottom. Marks is up top, more y is up top, more z in terms of the exponents on the bottom. Um, when you multiply with the same base, you add the exponents. Distributes, you're adding the exponents. Multiply up top first, and then ask yourself, more x is up top, more y is down below, exponent y. Synthetic division, and put the negative 2, set x plus 2 equal to 0. Put that root in the cubby. You're doing 3x to so the third divided by 1x. 3 divided by 1 is 3, that's why it comes down. You multiply and add negative 2 times 7, negative 14, and add that and add. You get a big, you know, you, you get a big remainder. That could happen. You started with 3x to the third, but you divided by x, so now you have 3x squared. And then 56. Put 1 in the cubby, 7, negative 11, and 3. Bring down the 7. Negative 1 is your remainder. You write like that. 1 power less. If you started with 7x squared, you're left with 7x. Folks, this is looking like your final video for 2018. This is Yak Math Video signing out.